happy holidays. It seems a little early for the holidays, I know, but it seems lately like once Halloween is over, it's time to start thinking about all things holiday. So that's what we're doing here at the museum with our cocktail lesson this week. So the cocktail we're focusing on today isn't really a traditional holiday beverage, but the flavors in it really do kind of remind you of, you know, being around a warm fire on a cold night, celebrating with family and friends, and just kind of enjoying this magical time of year. Plus, it has an unexpected connection to snow. So without further ado, let's dive into the history of the Brandy Alexander. The Brandy Alexander came into existence in the early 20th century and probably peaked in popularity in the 1970s sometime. Though it has a reputation as being a delicate, frou-frou drink, do not let that distract you from its deliciousness. Look, miss, I was just about to have a drink and I wouldn't mind some company. Want one? Oh, no, thank you. I said I wouldn't mind some company. Well, all right, I'll, I'll have a Brandy Alexander. <laughs> Some coffee. <laughs> That'd be fine. First of all, the original cocktail, simply the Alexander, used gin as the main ingredient. Some claim it was made in honor of Tsar Alexander II, also known as Alexander the Liberator. There is no evidence supporting this. A drama critic named Alexander Woolcott claimed it was named for him, but most people agree that this is not really the case. Credit is largely given to a bartender named Troy Alexander, who worked at the Hotel Rector in New York City in the early 20th century. The story goes, he was given the task of creating a white drink for an event celebrating Phoebe Snow. If you aren't familiar with Phoebe Snow, that's perfectly understandable. Neither was I. First of all, she is fictitious. Nothing but a whimsical promotional creation. She was a tool dreamt up by the marketing wizards of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. They burned anthracite coal, which at the time was advertised as a cleaner form of energy that made travel by train more appealing. At the turn of the 20th century, many Americans saw rail travel as dangerous and dirty. Trains that ran on bituminous coal, which was softer, could leave some passengers with a layer of soot over their traveling clothes. The DL and W Railroad conjured up the pristine Phoebe Snow as a symbol for the cleanliness of their anthracite-burning passenger trains. Her all-white clothing and pure, unblemished appearance, despite traveling by rail, was meant to encourage those upper-crust and fashionable Americans who may have been scared away. Phoebe Snow became something of a cultural icon of the times, and the railroad eventually even hired an actress to portray her at promotional events, where she would meet passengers and pose for photographs. When she disembarked the train during these appearances, she would ride in a carriage drawn by four white horses. The Brandy Alexander is super easy to make, lucky for us. So you just need about three ingredients, four if you count the nutmeg. So. First is you need the cream de cocoa. Now, in the Crossings magazine I put to get dark, I have light, just use whatever you have. Um, of course you need brandy, that's pretty key for a brandy Alexander. And of course you need some cream. And for your garnish, most of you probably have this in your cupboard anyway, you want some ground nutmeg. So like I said, it's really easy. You need a shaker, you gotta have ice in your shaker. This is one of those drinks that you shake, which is fun. Uh, so, what you do is just one ounce of each. So we're gonna do one ounce cream de cocoa. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I'm gonna go with it. And then one ounce of brandy. And you guessed it, one ounce of cream. Boom. And what comes next, the fun part, you shake it. 
don't let it splatter like I just did. Make sure it's secured nice and tight. Okay. Very, very cold when you do that. But for a drink for Phoebe Snow, it works. Okay. And then we pour it in our glass. Usually, the Brandy Alexander is served in a martini glass or a coupe glass. I don't have a coupe glass, but they're really cool. Okay. And then, we're going to just put a little dusting of nutmeg, just to make it look pretty. And, tastes nice. Cheers to Phoebe Snow. So it may not be the first drink you think of when you think of the holiday season, but I'm telling you, it's really good, and I think you should give it a try. Cheers, and happy holidays.